Sentences and clauses. Sentences. Sentences are the only groups of words that can stand alone to express complete thoughts. The key idea here is standing alone. Sentences are not dependent on some previous context or question to fill in grammatically significant missing pieces. For example, the following is a sentence because it can stand alone as a grammatically complete unit. I would like a pizza with anchovies and pineapple. We must be careful to distinguish sentences from fragments, which are only pieces of sentences. The problem is that, in context, fragments can be perfectly meaningful and grammatical. However, their meaningfulness and grammaticality is not their own. It is borrowed from other sentences. Here is an example of such a fragment in a dialogue. Waiter, what would you like? Customer, a pizza with anchovies and pineapple. What the customer said is a fragment. The fragment makes sense only in the context of the dialogue. The fragment is a piece of telegraphic shorthand that borrows the rest of its meaning and grammar from the waiter's question. What the customer is really saying is this. I would like a pizza with anchovies and pineapple. Sentences never need to borrow from surrounding sentences to be grammatically complete. Sentences also have a distinctive structure. They can contain both the subject noun phrase and a verb phrase or predicate in traditional terms. In the example sentence just given, there is a subject noun phrase in P and a verb phrase. I would like a pizza with anchovies and pineapple. The fragment, a pizza with anchovies and pineapple, lacks both the subject and a complete verb phrase. Sentences classified by purpose. Sentences are used in four different ways. Up to this point, we have only looked at sentences used to make statements. But there are other ways to use sentences, for example, to ask questions, to issue commands, or to make exclamations. We will now examine in turn each of the four possible uses. Declarative sentences. Declarative sentences are used for making statements. Declarative sentences are always punctuated with periods. Here are some examples. This is a declarative sentence. Declarative sentences can be positive or negative. Even if they contain dependent clauses, declarative sentences are always punctuated with a period. Interrogative sentences. Interrogative sentences. Interrogative sentences are used for asking questions. Interrogative sentences must be punctuated with question marks. Here are some examples. Do you know what an interrogative sentence is? No, what are they? Why did you ask? Imperative sentences. Imperative sentences are used to issue commands. Imperative sentences are not defined by their punctuation, but by their grammar. Imperative sentences must have an understood you as the subject. They may be punctuated with either periods or exclamation points. Here are some examples. Go away. Cut it out. Stop it. Each of these examples has an implied you as the subject. You go away. You cut it out. You stop it. Exclamatory sentences. Exclamatory sentences are actually declarative sentences that are punctuated with exclamation points for emphasis. Here are some examples. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. This is really an exclamatory sentence. Sally has no cavities. Declarative and interrogative sentences are easy to recognize, but imperative and exclamatory sentences can be confusing because both can be punctuated with exclamation points. A mnemonic trick is to remember that exclamatory sentences can only be punctuated with exclamation points. The other thing to remember is that imperatives must have an understood you as the subject. Grammar trivia punctuated insect. There are actual butterflies that are called punctuation butterflies, the comma and the question mark. Their scientific names are Polygonia and Teriogatianus and Polygonia, comma. These butterflies have tiny markings on their wings that resemble their respective punctuation. Clauses. A clause can be either of two types of structures. One, independent clause or main clause, which can stand alone. Two, a dependent clause or subordinate clause, 
which is a clause that cannot stand alone and must be attached to or included within an independent clause. To cut down on terminological clutter, we will not use the redundant terms main and subordinate from now on. Instead, we will use only independent and dependent. A sentence must contain at least one independent clause, but in addition, a sentence may also contain one or more dependent clauses. We can think of a sentence as having this formula. Sentence equals independent clause plus dependent clauses. The parentheses around dependent clauses indicate that dependent clauses are optional. Here is an example of a sentence containing a dependent clause in italics modifying the independent clause. Lois takes her lunch whenever she has to attend a noon presentation. The clause whenever she has to attend a noon presentation is an adverb clause that modifies the verb takes. The independent clause can stand alone as a complete sentence, but the dependent clause cannot. Independent clause, Lois takes her lunch. Dependent clause, whenever she has to attend a noon presentation. Despite differences in their ability to stand alone, clauses, both independent and dependent, are set apart from all other grammatical structures by one key characteristic. Clauses must have subject-verb agreement. Here are the subjects in bold in the verbs in italics from the preceding example. Independent clause, Lois takes her lunch. Dependent clause, whenever she has to attend a noon presentation. In the independent clause, the verb takes agrees with its subject, Lois. And in the dependent clause, the verb has agrees with its subject, she. Most of the remainder of this chapter will focus on dependent clauses. There are three different types of dependent clauses, adverb clauses, adjective clauses, and noun clauses. As you can probably deduce from their names, each of these three types of dependent clauses acts as a single Part of speech. Adverb clauses. Do what adverbs always do. They modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Adjective clauses modify nouns and, once in a great while, pronouns. Noun clauses play the basic roles that noun phrases play. They act as subjects, objects, and predicate nominatives. All dependent clauses have the same basic structure. They all begin with special introductory flag, Words that signal the fact that the following clauses are dependent clauses, not freestanding independent clauses. These special flag words have different names according to the type of dependent clause they introduce. Noun clauses are unique in that they have not just one but two types of flag words. Here are examples of each type of introductory flag words underlined dependent clauses in italics. Type of dependent clause term for introductory flag word, example. Type of dependent clause, adverb clause, term for introductory flag word, subordinating conjunction, example. Whenever it rains, our creek runs over. Type of dependent clause, adjective clause, term for introductory flag word, relative pronoun, example. The creek that runs by our house floods, Type of dependent clause, noun clause. Term for introductory flag word, that type. Example, the problem is that our creek floods. Type of dependent clause, noun clause. Term for introductory flag word, what type. Example, we saw what the flooded creek did. The following chart elaborates on these types of clauses followed by a more complete explanation of each. Dependent clauses. Type, adjective, relative clauses, adverb clauses, noun clauses. Function, modify nouns and pronouns, modify various words, serve as subject, object, predicate, nominative, or a positive, subtypes, restrictive and non-restrictive, modify predicate adjectives, modify comparative adverbs, modify verbs, that type, what type, flag word, relative pronoun, who, whom, that, whose, which, 
subordinating conjunction, because, after, although, even if, until, etc., that if, whether or not, what, why, when, who, whose, how, etc. Adverb clauses. Adverb clauses must begin with a subordinating conjunction. As an overview, here are some examples of adverb clauses and the three roles that they can play. Modifying verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. The adverb clauses are in italics and the subordinating conjunctions are in bold. Modifying verbs. I ordered a whole pizza because I had skipped lunch. Give me a call if I can help you. Modifying adjectives. I am sorry that we missed you last night. The movie was even worse than I had feared. Modifying other adverbs. I answered more sharply than I had intended. We did better than we thought we would. Adverb clauses that modify verbs. Adverb clauses that modify verbs are by far the most common type of adverb clause. This type of adverb clause also has the largest number of subordinating conjunctions. While each individual subordinating conjunction has its own specific meaning, it is possible to group them by broad categories. Here is a list of the more common subordinating conjunctions classified by meaning. Note that many subordinating conjunctions are compounded of more than one word. Time. After, as, as soon as, before, even after, even before, since, meaning from when, until, when, whenever, while. Place. Every place. Everywhere, where, wherever. Manner, as, as if, as though. Cause, as, because, in as much as, since, so that. Condition, if, on condition that, provided that, unless. Concession, although, even though, though, Following are some examples of adverb clauses illustrating the different categories of subordinating conjunctions. Adverb clauses in italics, subordinating conjunctions in bold. Time. I had finished my popcorn before the movie even started. The theater gets really quiet when the movie starts. Place. We found broken glass where the accident had occurred. The lamb followed Mary everywhere she went. Manner. They talked about us as if we were not even there. I parked the car as though nothing had happened. Cause. Sue needs the key because she has to lock up tonight. We left the game early since it was getting pretty one-sided. Condition. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Fred will go to the meeting unless you want to go yourself. Concession. Fred went to the meeting, although he didn't want to. We went to dinner, even though none of us were very hungry. For the most part, we do not use a comma before adverb clauses. The three subordinating conjunctions of concession, although, even though, and though, are exceptions to this rule. Adverb clauses beginning with these words are always set off with commas. The use of the comma probably reflects the fact that the clauses following these subordinating conjunctions are contrary to what we might expect to follow from the meaning of the independent clause. Adverb clauses that modify verbs behave very much like single word adverbs. As you recall, one of the easiest tests for single word adverbs that modify verbs is the adverb. Movement test. Here, slightly modified to apply to adverb clauses. Adverb clause movement test. The adverb clause movement test. If a clause can be moved to the beginning of the sentence, then that clause is an adverb that modifies the verb. Here is the adverb clause movement test applied to the preceding examples of adverb clauses. Note that with the exception of adverb clauses that employ subordinating conjunctions of manner, as, as if, and as though, the adverb clause movement test is highly reliable. Time. Before the movie even started, I had finished my popcorn. When the movie starts, the theater gets really quiet. Place. Where the accident had occurred, we found broken glass. Everywhere she went, the lamb followed Mary. Manner, as if we were not even there, they talked about us. 
as though nothing had happened, I parked the car. Cause, because she has to lock up tonight, Sue needs the key. Since it was getting pretty one-sided, we left the game early. Condition, if I were you, I wouldn't do that. Unless you want to go yourself, Fred will go to the meeting. Concession, although he didn't want to, Fred went to the meeting. Even though none of us were very hungry, we went to dinner. Also note that when adverb clauses are moved to the first position of the sentence, they are always followed by commas. This use of the comma is obligatory. According to a large study of college writing, leaving off the comma after an introductory adverb clause is the single most common punctuation error among college students. Adverb clauses that modify adjectives. Adverb clauses can only modify predicate adjectives, not adjectives used to modify following nouns. As you may recall, predicate adjectives follow linking verbs. For example, in the sentence, Sally was sad, sad is a predicate adjective following the linking verb was. Adjectives used to modify following nouns cannot themselves be modified by adverb clauses. In the sentence, Sally sang a sad song, sad is not a predicate adjective. Sad modifies the following noun song. There are two slightly different patterns depending on the form of the predicate adjective being modified. If the predicate adjective is not in its comparative form, that is, if it is in what is technically called a base form, then the conjunctive adverb is that. If the predicate adjective is in its comparative form, then the conjunctive adverb is than. Here are some examples of both patterns. Adverb clauses in italics, predicate adjectives in bold. Base form predicate adjective plus that plus independent clause. We were glad that you could come. I am afraid that it might rain this afternoon. Harvard was certain that it could be Oklahoma in football. As the parentheses around that indicate, we can drop the conjunctive adverb that from the adverb clause. In most situations, dropping the flag word from any dependent clause is rather unusual. Dropping the that makes it somewhat harder to recognize the adverb clause for what it is since the normal subordinating conjunction flag word is missing. Nevertheless, dropping the that is both grammatical and common. Here are the same example sentences again, this time without the that. Notice how normal the sentences seem. We were glad you could come. I'm afraid it might rain this afternoon. Harvard was certain it could be Oklahoma in football. Comparative form predicate adjective plus than plus independent clause. It is later than you think it is. The dinner was more formal than I had expected it to be. The movie was more frightening than the book was. Recall from chapter one that comparative adjectives are formed in two ways, with ER endings, soon, sooner, hard, harder, or with more beautiful, more beautiful, upset, more upset. Adverb clauses modify both forms of comparative adjectives equally well. Adverb clauses that modify other adverbs Adverb clauses that modify other adverbs follow exactly the same pattern as adverb clauses that modify comparative adjectives. The adverb being modified must be in its comparative form and the subordinating conjunction is than and cannot be deleted. Here are some examples. Comparative form adverbs plus than plus independent clause. I answered more sharply than I had meant to. Star Trek, ships went faster than any had gone before. The forest fire spread more rapidly than the crews had anticipated. Grammar trivia. Substantive adjectives. Blurring the distinction between nouns and adjectives, a substantive adjective is usually defined as an adjective that has an inferred noun after it, as in, I like the red car, but she prefers the yellow. In truth, the word yellow has qualities of both noun and adjective. As so often happens, grammar is not a purely categorical matter.